I've got a plan. We take magenta real time plus intern VL3, and that equals infinite contextual radio. When you're writing code, you're probably not working in silence. You're probably jumping from lo-fi playlist to lo-fi playlist to break core playlist to I don't even know what playlists. There's a lot of interesting playlists out there, but this can get pretty static and boring. So what I wanted to do was create a new, more personalized way of listening to music while I was coding. I decided to do this by using multiple different AI models. In the first phase, we have one AI model that's dedicated to continuously generating music on the fly. And then in the second phase, we have a secondary AI model that's constantly monitoring what you're currently working on to be able to suggest a genre that best fits what you're actively doing. So let's get into how we can create an infinite contextual radio station. The first phase is selecting the AI model that we want to use for our continuous music generation. And there's a lot of different options out there. There's some open source models, there's some closed source models. Probably one of the more popular closed source models is Lyria that you can run in AI Studio. And you can continuously change the genre or the feeling of the music that's being generated on the fly. But this is a closed source model and I really wanted to use an open source model that I could also run locally for my radio station. So I decided to use this Magenta real-time model, which was released super recently, just on June 20th actually. And it claims to be the kind of cousin of the Lyria model. And it works surprisingly well for the size of model that it is. It's only an 800 million parameter model. Um, they also, when you're running it on the collab notebook that they provide, they provide the GitHub code as well as the model card on Hugging Face. They use the free tier TPUs to run this model, and they say it's eventually targeted towards running on local consumer hardware. But I tested it on a lot of different machines, and it runs extremely well already, which is what we're going to be using today. I find the way this model works, and just music models in general, very interesting. It's a very challenging problem to be able to solve because the music needs to be constantly generated on the fly, but it also needs to be cohesive with whatever music was coming before this. Now the way that this model handles that problem is it works as an auto-regressive transformer model. So it's constantly generating different chunks two seconds at a time. So these are fine audio tokens that are continuously being generated. But in order to provide the previous context to make this cohesive, it's inputting 10 seconds of music as coarse audio tokens. And this is input as the context so that we have this kind of smooth transition as we're constantly generating two seconds to two seconds to two seconds of music. It kind of reminds me of just-in-time compilation, but for music generation. So if it takes at least less than two seconds to be able to generate the next two seconds of music, you're good, but you gotta keep up with that or else you're gonna get this like d -d 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 for the music generation output. And that's just really unpleasant to listen to. So if we go over to my GitHub repository, this is a nice sneak preview on the infinite contextual radio that is available to you. Here's the music container that's already here. If we take a look at my Docker file, this has all the dependencies and the thing that went wrong here is when I was working on this, there actually was a new build of the nightly TensorFlow library the day that I was working on it. And so their collab notebook completely broke and I thought, oh my gosh, I have done something wrong. I have broken their AI model. Well, for once in my life, it wasn't my fault. It was actually a customized version of TensorFlow that completely broke everything. So you can see, I've already added in these very specific versions, so be appreciative. <laughs> anyway, going back to the other parts of this, what this is doing is this is opening up a nice little web server and running the model on the back end. So it's exposed to be able to take in these HTTP POST requests to be able to modify the genre dynamically. Now, if we go over here, I already have this running, you can see this is the model running inside of my Docker container on my nice beefy server right now. So it's running very smooth and very fast. But if I go back over to this, this is the little UI that I have created for this where you can change the genre or you can even create your own genre if you would like. So let's listen to our music model, our magenta real-time model on the back end and see what it sounds like. It's pretty good. So that's some lo-fi here. Let's go into something more interesting. Let's see 
transition over to jazz. Smoothly transitioning. All right. <laughs> you see, it kind of incorporates the previous section because that's that chunking that I was talking about. So that's the input of the previous sections that's now being used to generate the next two seconds at a time. And now we've fully transitioned over to the jazz genre that we're currently looking at. All right, all right, okay. Over to disco funk. That's a transition. All right. Now that we've got the music model all figured out and we have a way to automatically change the genre, it's time to move on to the next phase, which is how to contextually get what is happening on your device so you can get that personalized music experience. So I came up with two different options for this. One is a kind of dumb way that works eh, pretty okay. And the second is a much more interesting way that involves a secondary AI model. Let's go into the first dumb way of this. Now, when I was creating this, I thought, okay, let's monitor the top processes currently executing on the system. Like if you were running top on your machine on Mac or Linux, you would be able to see that list and the percentage of CPU that any given process is currently using. So I thought, let's use the top process at any given time and map each popular process over to a music genre that seems fitting. So if we go over to our code, this process DJ is also available inside of their repository. You can see this is kind of the very simple way where it's taking in all of these different process names that would be commonly seen on on any different operating system, and it's mapping them to a particular genre. For example, if you were trying to code, you might get lo-fi hip hop. If you were trying to game, you might want something a little bit more exciting, so it can automatically change based off of the current context of the system. So let's go into a little demonstration and see how that works. Let's go back to our music. We'll play our disco funk again. I'm kind of enjoying that genre. It's good. Okay, and I'm gonna go over to my Python script and let's monitor our top processes so that we can automatically change this genre. So I'm gonna do our Python and this is connecting to our remote server that is hosting our music model that's actively executing. Here we go. And you see it's monitoring the top five applications that are executing. It's decided to change this to Chillwave <laughs> because of OBS, there's nothing I can do about that. <laughs> Now let's move on to the smarter solution. Now what I wanted to do is I wanted to incorporate an extra AI model to be able to input an image of what the current context of the machine is and what I'm currently working on so that it can analyze that image and output text, which is gonna be the suggested mu music genre that best fits my current context. And this is a very, very specific task. So we want, we want to be able to have the smallest model possible that's able to perform this. I tried a lot of different models, Gemma worked, a lot of them were actually very successful with this task. But the one that I ended up selecting as the best choice for this is Intern VL3. And I used the 2 billion parameter model for this since it was pretty effective at performing this task. This is a very new model, it was released <laughs> April 2025, so we're working with a lot of very new models at the moment, I don't know, I feel like exploring. The nice thing about this is if you look at their research paper, I'm gonna go down to their graph. You can see the two billion parameter model. Let's see, it's that purple? Yep, that's purple. The two billion parameter model is described right here and it's even comparable with some seven and eight billion parameter models. And in my testing, this actually was very well demonstrated because it was able to perform the task very effectively. Now what I did is I have it running inside of LM Studio and I'm giving it a system prompt that is telling it to input the image, analyze the context, and then suggest the music genre in a very specific JSON output. And if you know anything about models, they're very non-deterministic, so sometimes I've noticed that it goes a little bit haywire and it's just like, ooh, I'm gonna make up a new JSON schema because I can. But for the most part, it works pretty well. And you can see, I gave it a screenshot here of what I was currently working on, and it output this music genre electronic dance music. That's pretty cool, doing coding, rocking out to some dance music, that's nice. The way this fits in our current music generation ecosystem is we can open up a server in LM Studio so that we can directly query the model on the back end. So that means that the model is gonna be continuously running on whatever target machine you want to be able to execute the model. 
That's another reason why we want to use the smaller model, because if you use the bigger ones, it's just going to fill up all your RAM unnecessarily while it's executing and waiting for our next input task. It's also kind of overkill. Like if you use the smarter models, they're, they're too smart for this task. It's kind of like having God tell you what to eat for breakfast in the morning. It's just, it's a little bit overkill. Another reason is this is kind of a time sensitive matter. So we want to be able to have very quick generation to be able to keep up with the context of what's happening on, on our machine to be able to continuously suggest those new music genres. Now for the most exciting part, which is putting all of this together. So currently I have my music model running inside of my Docker container. And I also have my intern VL3 model running inside of LM Studio with that server open up. I also have an additional application that is available inside of my GitHub repository that I will link to in the description of this video. And this is working as like the nice go between between these models to allow my model to dynamically decide what genre of music to suggest to the music model based off of the current context of what I'm doing on my screen. And if I go over to my application, I can configure where my music model is actually running so I can configure the server. I also have the option of using either the process DJ or the actual AI model DJ. Let's start out with our simple process DJ. So I'm going to start this, changes us to chill wave. So it's actively monitoring the top processes that are executing on my system. And then it's going to dynamically change the genre that it starts playing. Very nice. I don't know what it would do if I started doing like crazy fork bomb stuff. That'd be very interesting to test. Let's move on to our slightly more interesting option. And this is going to be our AI model option. So I'm gonna switch my DJ type over to the LLM DJ. So it's currently monitoring the activity on my screen to decide what kind of music best fits what I'm actively working on. So in order to make this more interesting, we can look at the console and see the decisions that it's making at any given time. It's decided acoustic for us, that's cool. Let's see what it does with molecular fusion reaction paper. Oh, I'm hearing something. <laughs> Take a guess what genre this is, I have no idea. Academic, I didn't know that was a genre. <laughs> We're just making up genres in this video. That's a respectable one. Now let's move on. This is a sample email. It's not my real email, so don't even try. Oh, it changed. This is good email reading music. I like this. Office. <laughs> I, think, I think I'm seeing a theme here. It's picking what I'm doing. But luckily the music model is responding to all of these different genres, so it's working well for us. Okay, I'm gonna throw it a weird one. Okay, here we go, it just changed. Oh, this is so good. <laughs> oh my gosh. It's really happy too. I also like how it keeps like the context of the previous one so it smoothly transitions to the next genre. What if we wanted to code? Flip cursor, give it a second to catch up. What the heck is this music? All right. Well, this is sure keeping me on my toes for coding music. Let's see what genre it's selected. Electronic. Interesting. <laughs> it's kind of spooky. <laughs> spooky coding. Now let's move on to one of the weirdest, most interesting experiments that I did when I was testing out these models. I remember reading an article a couple years ago talking about particular tokens or particular words that ended up glitching out GPT models. So I wanted to see, does the music model have the same issues when it comes to these particular words? Is it susceptible to these basically? It makes the GPT models completely lose their minds and start talking about really crazy stuff that doesn't make sense to the current conversation. So let's take a look at this and pick a few of these words and see if we can get our music model to do anything from these. Solid gold Magikarp with a space. We're gonna copy this and we're gonna test this out. Oh my gosh. That's really terrifying. It's like it's trying to speak right now. Oh. 
kind of horror inducing. Let's try another one. It's definitely susceptible to these. It's definitely susceptible. Uh, let's try random redditor with no. <laughs> let's go over. Random redditor with no. Happy pop right now. Care to be gone. Ooh. <laughs> this is so creepy. It's like it would make the chat model lose its mind. But somehow that also makes the music model get super, super creepy as well. Ooh, I don't like that. Okay, let's move on to another one. Download EJ. Creating music here. Ooh. This is insane. It's completely lost its mind. It's This is what you play at night if you never want to sleep again. <laughs> it's like it's completely taken all of the different genres and stuff and it's arbitrarily going back and forth between them. Ooh. <gasps> It's like it's trying to talk to me too and be super creepy. Oh, we're gonna stop that. That's enough of that. So what is happening here and why are the music models susceptible to the same glitch tokens that the GPT models are susceptible to? They don't have any kind of ancestry in common and they're not the same model. Now we have to understand why glitch tokens are generated in the first place. Glitch tokens are generated because they are basically the most centroid tokens inside of the model, meaning they're closer to everything else than anything else, which only makes sense if you're working with a multidimensional hyperspherical shell. They're the most central tokens to the model. Now to answer the question of why is Magenta RT susceptible to the same glitch tokens as the GPT models? Magenta RT actually uses another model called Music Coca on the back end to be able to transform the user input text into style embeddings to be able to automatically change the genre. Now, Download HA is actually an Ira Iranian piracy website, so it kind of makes sense that the token would be a little bit all over the place. It might have different languages, it might have incorrect tagging. There's a lot of factors that could go along with it. So there's kind of like this infected training data that any model that was trained off of that infected source is all going to share the same kind of glitch tokens and the same kind of challenge when it encounters these keywords of interest. And this kind of explains why completely unrelated models can share the same glitches. So thank you so much for watching everybody. I hope you enjoyed this video. Now go listen to some infinite personalized radio. I'm going to right now. Oh, it's still on download HA. Go over to our disco funk. Glory wired.